When I used to work as a journalist, I filed a lot of public records requests. Emails, contracts, briefing notes, you name it. By asking governments for these documents, I hope to better understand the decisions they made and their impacts on people's lives. Anyone can do this, by the way. You don't have to be a journalist. But there's a bit of a catch. It's manual, tedious work. I'd fill the same web forms over and over, jumping from text file to browser to spreadsheet and back. There was a lot of copying and pasting. Sometimes I'd mail letters or even send my requests by fax. Fax! It didn't matter that I was brimming with ideas and questions to ask. I could only work as fast as the technology would allow. And the requests I didn't send? All those records lost in time like tears in rain. Okay, I'm being a little dramatic. But even if you don't care about public records, some of this probably sounds familiar. All the time we spend switching between countless apps and tabs, the sheer number of places where data lives, all the hoops we have to jump through to get the answers we need to build that slide deck or spreadsheet or bug report, it's a lot. But this wouldn't be an episode of Working Smarter if I wasn't about to tell you there's a better way. I'm your host, Matthew Braga, and on today's episode, we're talking to Pascal Weinberger, the co-founder and CEO of Bardeen, an AI-powered automation platform. With Bardeen, Pascal wants to help people effortlessly automate repetitive tasks and the apps they already use for work, no code required. His hope is that by removing some of the friction that makes it hard for people to do their jobs, they can spend more time on things that have impact, however that looks for you, whether you're a public records journalist or a security engineer. That's coming up next on this episode of Working Smarter. Pascal, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Super excited about this one. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. At Dropbox, you know, we've been thinking a lot about how, how work is changing. That's also something that we think a lot about on this podcast as well. And I want to start by asking you maybe a bit of a, a, a big question, but I'm wondering... What do you think is wrong with the way that we work today? Oh, my God. Where do I start? That's a big one. So <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but like I always have like 60 tabs open in my browser at any point in time with like minimum 40 different logos uh, of all sorts of different apps. Right. And it's like there's a different specialized SaaS app for about anything we do in our work lives today, which in and on itself is a great thing. Like they're all really powerful apps. They're really specialized. They solve a really big pain point for customers. And it's kind of what has fueled this SaaS revolution over the last few years. Now, as a user of that, I end up finding myself in a situation where I have to juggle work and data and things between all these different apps all the time. And that can be quite frustrating. It leads to a lot of loss of time. It rips me out of context every single time I do it. It feels like I'm the, figuratively speaking, monkey, mm -hmm. like that's like moving data around. And it's, and it's, it, I, I don't think that's how work is supposed to be. And the interesting thing is, we've seen this with the web trap, like web as a whole pre search engines, right? If you think back to what search was like pre search engines, you kind of had to know which website to go to, where you're going to find the data pull the data from there, synthesizes for your needs and so on. Now what you end up doing is you just go to your favorite search engine, ask it the question, and it goes and does all this delegation basically of the search for you. And I believe that like we will see a very similar transition happening with like the do part of work, right? Not the information retrieval part, but the action part of work. So like, hey, send a follow-up email to the participants from the last meeting, reminding them to do X, right? Like for me to do that, I have to go into the calendar, find the last meeting, get the email addresses, go into like my whatever email program I'm using, paste those emails in, like write the email, like draft it. And so on. it's like three or four taps, which is every time copy pasting around. Like it's it's really painful things to do. And 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 that's kind of the problem we're trying to solve with Badin also, is where we're kind of trying to build an action engine that lets you automate things across the web. So th that was literally going to be my next question is I, I wanted to know, like, wh what, what are you trying to solve then with Bardeen? For us at Bardeen, we believe that work should be frictionless. And 
in order for us to do that, we have to solve this automation and repetitive task friction problem that we all have because of all the, again, context switches, many tabs, many different, you know, purpose build tools for every single individual task we do every day. Ultimately, we believe that will unlock a huge amount of human productivity in the workforce. It will make people less frustrated about doing the work that they're doing. So we want to just like make this easier and 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 do it in a way that's like really accessible to the end user. Right? There's there's existing automation solutions on the market. They're mostly built for engineers or operations people that then let them control the automations that are deployed across an organization. We think that like to really drive this change and to really bring automation to the end user, it has to be as easy as using Dropboxes. <laughs> like everyone has to be able to do it. With Badin, the way we do it is we have these language models that basically I can just describe in natural language what it is that I'm trying to automate. And then we will try to understand what the intent is of what, what you're doing. We will build the automation for you. You can preview it, edit it, and easy to use in a code builder and all that stuff. And then it's right there in your browser. You hit a shortcut option B, your Badin pops open. And I think with that, we can really make automation accessible to the end user, to the people who are actually doing the work, not the operations people or anything like that. You know, not to disregard it. It's also super important that they have control over this, but ultimately enabling the person who actually does the work to automate it. We think that's going to drive major change in the workforce. And that's what we're trying to solve for. I, I want to dig a little bit deeper into what we're actually automating here. So you've described, you know, there's all of these different tabs, there's all of these different uh, apps and services and pieces of software that we're, we're using on a day-to-day -day basis. What are some of the specific, like, tasks or actions that you can use Bardeen to, to let you automate, uh, both within those tools, but even across those different tools? Yeah, that's a great question. So we see the biggest value of these automation tools in the cross-platform workflows. Right, like every platform themselves kind of has a little bit of automation built in these days. So if all you're looking to do is automate things within Dropbox, like Dropbox has great ways to do that, right? But like truth is most people use multiple different tools. So like the value of what we're focusing on is cross-platform. And then it really depends on what it is that you're doing. Let's just take sales as an example, right? Like if I'm a salesperson, I'm scouring LinkedIn all day long to find prospects. I see Matthew at Dropbox is a great person I want to sell my product to. Now what happens is like I copy paste some of your relevant information into my CRM system. And then like I will try to draft a personalized outreach message based on some information on your profile. I will then go to my email and like take the template message, personalize it, find your email address using some sort of third party lookup tool that like gives me an email address for some person on LinkedIn or Sales Navigator or whatever tool I'm using. And then like copy paste all this data together and email, send that email. Now that takes me five, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the complexity, every time I do this. And again, if I work in sales, this is a vast majority of my time. And with Badin, you can do this in a single click. So you're on the LinkedIn profile of a person, say Matt, that you want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you have a pre-built automation and like all the backend copy pasting and like drafting the outreach email and all that stuff is taken care of you by Badin. And again, it really saves a lot of time. So that's kind of like one example. There's many, many more. Again, like I use Bardeen personally. We use it across the team from, from accounting to product management, just for personal productivity, meetings, reminders, follow-up, scheduling, sharing things in meetings. Sales is a big one. Research is a big one. All these sorts of different workflows you can automate. There's a lot of power in everything that's that kind of sort of looks like a prospecting, whether that's for sales or for recruiting workflows because they're you know time equals money the better i do it the faster i do it the more productive i am but there's also a lot of stuff around you know just like general task automation you you sort of answered this a little bit but who who is the audience for what you're building like you mentioned sales as being a big kind of role but like what other kind of roles or, or jobs are we talking about here uh, in terms of who bardeen can can help for us in terms of audience we really focus on the people who are actually doing the work so it's, you know, those frontline workers, if you will, in those roles that are highly repetitive and usually are like very output performance driven roles. So that is sales, recruiting, project management, C-level executives, founders, agency owners, to some extent like product managers or project managers that have to like juggle a lot of different tools and tasks across things. 
And and then there's also sort of like a long tail of what we call personal productivity. That's just like the little annoying tasks we all have to do every day. So like, you know, I get an invoice per email and I need it to be saved in a specific Dropbox folder and add it in a Google Sheet for accounting or something like that. But I'm not really working in accounting, right? It's just something as a founder, I have to take care of it. Or even as an individual for reimbursement, I have to take care of it. So there's a very wide array of kind of this long tail of personal productivity workflows. Your imagination is the limit of what you can automate. So we've seen people do all sorts of things that we haven't expected. Like like what? I think like we had some fun ones of like, for example, teachers that were like preparing history homework or something like they want to maintain that they, they like have some snippets from a website like that they're getting sources from. They highlight that snippet, then it automatically gets copied into like a Notion database along with the timestamp and the URL of where it was accessed. And then like that gives a very easy way to like, you know, just kind of with a single click, like maintain your references and so on. Why is this something that's important to you? Like, why why is this a challenge that you feel passionate about solving? My background is machine learning, computer vision. I was always drawn to this idea of automation, just because like any engineer or machine learning engineer specifically, you kind of inherently grew up with this idea of like writing shell scripts and writing like, you know, little shortcuts for every little thing you do, like whether it's training a model or uploading some stuff, you probably have some like, shell script for that you know some like cron <laughs> job scheduled that will yep. take care of it automatically for you and then as i kind of progressed into a more like founder leadership role i really missed this like opportunity to automate stuff so like i had this experience where i had to like recruit a bunch of people for a company i was working at and i just f- again found myself manually copy pasting data from linkedin and github and other sources that we were using for lead gen into you know various databases then reaching out to recruiters with a little note of like why i think that person is interesting and they they would for me draft the outreach email which again like this this already half automated right but like i would have needed to do that myself otherwise and and like i tried to hack together my own little chrome extension to do that where i just like click the chrome extension it would like do it for me and then you know kind of over time i realized that there's many many more automations like this and as i shared this with the team people kept asking me to build like chrome extensions for them to automate little (laughs) tasks and at that point kind of realized that you know like i i obviously can't scale like building a million different chrome extensions but kind of you know as i also talked about this with my co-founder who had a very similar experience himself leading an engineering team we saw a big gap in the market between on, on one side you have to like if this, then that style automation tools, those are like kind of cloud-based, trigger-based automation tools, Zapier being the most famous one, but there's hundreds of others. And then on the other side, you have this really powerful, but fairly inaccessible, like RPA universe, that's like UI path automation anyway, all those types of things that they're very powerful tools, but Fortune 500 companies use them. And even there, they come along with like an army of consultants to implement the solution for them. It's a very top-down approach, not really like helping the end user do much. And there's also a lot of resistance in, in, in those adoptions. So so we kind of like saw this opportunity in the middle and something that like kind of combines the best of both worlds and makes it really accessible to end users. And I believe there's a huge opportunity in unlocking productivity across the board, right? Like the reason I think this is an important project to work on is because ultimately, if you think about it, if you can make, and this might sound like a bold claim, right? But like if you make like every person at least 10% more productive and I'm, 100% convinced that everyone can shave off 10% of their time by automating some of the repetitive, annoying work they're doing. Now you've made like human productivity like 10% more productive, right? And like think about all the things people can achieve if you give people 10% of their time back. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's one of the things that I think you often hear about AI tools is is how they have this potential to take on the repetitive and the, and the boring tasks and then the drudge work off our plates. I'm wondering, like more generally, like for the, the average Bardeen user, what do you hope that automating some of their tasks will free them up to do more of instead? I think this is really individual um, answers, right? There's one element to this, it's like, okay, you have more time to do other things. Most people will just end up doing more work, right? Like we live in a very performance-oriented society, especially in this market environment. Everyone's looking to do more with less. Every founder and company at ScaleUp I talk to, they're looking to like increase their average revenue per employee. Like it's a big metric people are talking about right now. 
However, obviously, there's also like this element of just like removing annoyance from your workflows, right? One part is being more productive, but, you know, usually these highly repetitive workflows, that's the thing that isn't fun, right? As a founder, like I love having engineering discussions, product design discussions, talking to users, understanding their needs. Yet I have to do all these things like, you know, recruiting people, accounting, this, that. And like, that's usually not like what I get my energy doing, right? So if I can spend as little time as possible doing that because I automated most of it, I can be much more productive, you know, founder myself because I have more time and energy to do the things that actually matter and move the needle. And I think that's true for everyone in every role. Obviously, there's also the other part of, you know, you're happy with your output and you just want to spend more time with family or doing sports or whatever else you want to do. Again, very individualistic what, what people end up doing with their time. You've danced around this a little bit, but like, I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit more about how you've been using Bardeen in your day-to-day work. I mean, I'm obviously very biased, right? Like basically every single task <laughs> I do, I think about like, okay, is this something I can automate? But like the things I actually find a lot of value from is recruiting, for example. And there's a lot of stuff with doing personalized outreach. We do a lot of hiring from, I mean, LinkedIn kind of being obvious example, but we also do it from GitHub. So like we look at like open source projects of different uh, projects that are kind of adjacent to our space with same expertise profiles and so on. And then like, I try to figure out like, okay, who are the people who contribute to this and how can I best reach out to them in an automated way so that like, it doesn't take me two hours to do it every time. Other big thing for me is handling a lot of the admin work that is involved in running a smallish startup company. So like a lot of the like day-to-day burden with these types of mundane tasks, they're still on us, the founding team. So we automate a lot of it, right? If I get an invoice, it will automatically trigger emails to our accounting team to forward the invoice. There's also some really cool recent functionality that we're adding, for example, for like research. Like every day there's a new company popping up or new things popping up. And like we have some really cool automations now with like AI agents that you can use in Bardeen that will go and find out a lot of information about something. So say I wanted to like research Dropbox, right? Like I would figure out like what are the reviews like what are people saying about dropbox i would want to look at your website the about page get kind of a summary of that i would want to look at team linkedin's founding team all that kind of stuff like just that research project would take me like hour maybe two hours to do and find all that information or i built this once you know and like now i have a research bot that always goes to the same sources and i just type the name of the company it'll pull all that information for me and really like write me a nice summarized research report almost like a junior analyst type work product like they would spend a few days doing this but like with Badin, i can actually build a really powerful automation to do that so those are just some examples i could go on for hours about i i, I love it <laughs> Well, and and you have me wondering, have you or your customers been able to quantify some of those savings? Like, can you put a number on, you know, number of hours saved, amount of money saved, things of that nature? Again, it really depends on the person and the use case. Having said that, one thing that we do in the product is we actually track. So this is a very like guesstimate pseudoscientific approach, right? But like every action that you do within Bardeen we have a very rough estimate as to how much time this saves you. So for example, uploading a file to Dropbox, I think we say it's like 30 seconds. Like you have to open Dropbox, find the right folder, like wait for it to load, uh, like drag and drop the file or select it. And then as you kind of use these things in aggregate, right? So you might have an automation that like takes the current page, like downloads a PDF of the current page, uploads it to Dropbox, and then like figures out like who are the participants in the meeting I'm in right now. Say I want to share a screenshot of the product description I'm looking at right now with, with everyone here on this call. And, you know, like goes to my calendar, pulls that. Like each of these things saves, you know, say like, 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds each step. So like across the whole playbook, you just add that together and then you multiply by the times I run this. And this gives us a very rough estimate of what we call time saved that people can see in their account. And now as we're kind of pushing more into like Teams, org wide enterprise adoption, we're going to be much more like, you know, this is a big part of the value proposition of how we communicate value to users. So, so it's something that we're trying to be very vocal about. It's ultimately also a big North Star metric that for us as a team, we're optimizing both for overall aggregate time saved across all user base, but also average time saved for each user. Because that obviously is a big, I think the biggest driver for value creation for us. Hmm. Well, and I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Teams a second ago, because, you know, I think I have a pretty good sense of how 
a tool like Bardeen can have an impact on an individual level. Like I'm already thinking of automations that I could use to mm-hmm. to to sort of improve the way that I do my job. But what are the implications here for for teams more broadly? Like how do the benefits of automation, I guess, trickle down or or trickle outwards into the organization at large? We've seen this a lot with our early user base. So, so we kind of like scale to about like 250,000 users now. And like we had a lot of requests from people that were like, hey, I built this automation in my, you know, Bardeen account, but I have these like six colleagues in my team. They essentially do the same thing I'm doing every day. I want to share this with them. And then we created this sharing flow that basically would allow you to share a single instance of an automation. And then that created this whole mess where people were creating like Google Docs where they were like, okay, for this process, here's the video description of how you can use this. And here's the link to the automation. And then like they would almost create like a standard operating procedure type document of like how you run your processes in a team or company. And like that then obviously created this need for like an actual Teams experience. So similar to like shared Dropbox folders, right? Like I I have my own Dropbox folder that I have my personal stuff in, but then I have my team Dropbox folder that like are all the things that my team needs access to. And I can collaborate on this. Very similar, you can think about like the Bardeen Teams version or, or like business as we call it, which basically allows me to have my own private space still of the things that I individually need to automate. Then you would simply drop it into this team space. And then similar to like a Dropbox shared folder, everyone in the team would have access to the same automation. And it would create this like, you know, almost standard operating procedure that's encoded into the automations across a whole team or an organization that we see a lot of value from. Working Smarter is brought to you by Dropbox. We build AI-powered tools that help knowledge workers get things done no matter how or where they work. Tools like Dropbox Dash, an AI-powered universal search tool designed for all your cloud content, no matter what you're working on or where it's stored. Figma, OneDrive, Salesforce, Notion, your email, your desktop, your calendar. With Dash, you can search it all. Ask a question and Dash will find you the answer, whether it's hiding in an untitled doc or one of 200 open tabs. Collect and organize cloud content with stacks, shareable smart collections that go beyond what's possible with bookmarks and folders. And like any good assistant, Dash even knows your schedule, from the files you need to start your day to the meetings you have after lunch. Because the less time you spend on work about work, the more time you have for the work itself, the work that really matters. To learn more about Dropbox Dash and try Dash for free, visit dash.ai and discover a more enlightened way of working. So with Bardeen, you have these pre-made automations, but people can also create new automations with natural language. You, you just describe what you want Bardeen to do, almost as if you were like asking a colleague for help over Zoom and and Bardeen can construct that for you. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on like, how does that actually work in practice? How can you create automations that way? So we use this language technologies using like large pre-trained transformer models in the background uh, and a lot of kind of tooling and semantics. And we have our own like programming language, if you will, that's a domain specific language that we call like Bardeen command language, BCL, that kind of like underlies the whole product. And as you then kind of like describe a workflow, say like I would just write in natural language, like send the current pages PDF to the participants of the ongoing meeting then what we call magic box so like the language model would basically understand like what's the intent behind what i'm doing it would also understand the context in which i am like what are the integrations i have enabled like what is typically the tool i use for like sharing stuff what's the calendar i use that it needs to go and look up so so across that whole board like basically then the language model builds the pre-built automation for me on the fly like reflects it to me in this no code builder like you kind of see a preview of what it will do like step by step and I can go in and correct it right like I can say like oh no not this like use this tool instead of that or like you misunderstood something or something like that you can iterate on it and then once you're happy with the workflow you save it as a pre-built automation and next time you need to do the same thing you don't need to go through this whole flow again just click the button and you're done so that's kind of like the flow that people go through and and, and we think it's very powerful right You can also do this with like a no-code builder. Like we also have this like no-code builder, very standard kind of like an automation builder the way you would expect. You know, you have these like building blocks and you drag and drop them around and connect them with each other. 
what we saw there is like people actually struggle with this like blank canvas problem, right? It's like for me to like build this workflow, I have to almost think like an engineer, you know, and like, again, for technical people, this is very easy to do, but for like, you know, your average sales rep or your, you know, accountant or something like that, that they're not necessarily trained to think like this, or they just don't have the time to deal with it, frankly. And they're just like, I just want this done quickly. Like, here's what I need to do, like do it for me. This whole like build from scratch experience is pretty challenging. So you want to pre-built as much as you can, right? So either you do that through fully pre-built automations, again, complexity problem, or you take a language description and use that to create a pre-built automation that I then can can refine as I need to. How how has that resonated with users? The the fact that they can create those automations just with natural language, you know, no no code necessary. I think it's a big selling point for us these days. Again, for us, the way we think about it is we want to bring automation to everyone. Ultimately where we're working towards is really like automating the full end-to-end automation experience. Kind of funny, like automating automations, right? Because if you think about it, for you to automate something, kind of three things need to happen. You have to identify that what you're doing is automatable. Now, a lot of people don't even do that. Right? Like I've done this since 20 years, maybe. I might not even fully recognize that what I'm doing is even automatable. Then I need to build it. <laughs> right. Current solutions pretty hard, technical. I usually want to talk to like an engineer or some like consultant, something to help me with it, which creates a huge amount of friction. And then the third thing I have to actually run it. <laughs> right. Most existing solutions kind of pretty hard, not super accessible. Or I have to go like to a separate tab. I have to deal with all this authentication stuff and so on. And ultimately, what we're trying to do is we kind of solve for all these three things, right? Like we already have, I think, one of the easiest way to actually like run the automation. Now through this language interface, we have a very easy way of building the automation. And thirdly, what we're working on now is actually identifying the automations. So we're rolling this out now as we speak to a small number of testing users. But the idea essentially is that because we're in the browser, we can kind of see and detect repetitive workflows that you're doing. And we do this in a very, like, so it's privacy preserving, but essentially how it will work is like you kind of like look at like what are the things that you're doing say for example i'm switching tabs from linkedin to google sheets all the time and my clipboard content changes right so like that probably means i'm copy pasting data from one website into google sheets and then with that example like it would then identify what you're doing and 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 suggest a pre-built automation or build it for you on the fly and with that you really close the loop right with that you like identify build and automate on the user behalf and really makes this accessible to everyone. I know at Dropbox, we often talk about AI as, as being like this sort of silicon brain, uh, mm-hmm. like something that's aug- augmentative, assistive. You know, we're not trying to replace people with our tools. I'm wondering what kind of frame you use to think about Birdie. I think this is something that just like also on a philosophical and human level, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about we don't want to build bots to replace people. The whole product positioning and the way the product works is like, it, it makes you superhuman, right? Like you're still in the driving seat. You are still the person doing the work. You're still orchestrating and actually also building the automation, right? So like the way we think about it is, if anything, we give more power to the end user, the knowledge worker, frontline worker, however you want to call it, to, to be more productive themselves without having to wait for senior management to implement some RPA solution that will then ultimately try to replace them. Obviously, as you automate more things, there, there is a certain risk and definitely something that we as society have to think and talk about that comes with like now that maybe one person can do the work of two. Like, do I still need that big of a team? But there's still this kind of discussion. Ultimately, we believe any company I know or I talk to, they want to grow, they want to be more productive, they want to have more output, right? So like, I don't see a huge risk there over time, but uh, there will be certain periods, you know, where like, just the fact that people can automate will lead inevitably to savings and overhead reductions and so on. But like long term, we want this to be something that empowers the end user and helps people. What are you looking forward to next in the future, both for Bardeen, but also for where AI technology and, and machine learning is heading? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm generally like, you know, what people would call like a techno optimist. Like I always see the positive in technological development. I think for Badin, one thing we're really kind of like at the beginning of, which I'm really excited about is this kind of like the scale up journey. 
So, you know, similar to like Dropbox, you know, you kind of like build the initial version of the product and then you get it rolled out to, I think at this point, hundreds of millions of people. And like, we're kind of like at the very early stages of that, right? Like, I think we built a very powerful piece of technology. We understand that people get value from it. There's some really exciting stuff we're doing around like how to learn what to automate for people based on their behavior and really like close the full loop for the whole automation journey. That's something that like, I, I think like will be a huge unlock for the automation industry in general and like bring the superpower of automation to everyone. So that's kind of like for Bardeen, the things I'm most excited about. And then AI in general, I'm excited about new application fields there. One is like the medical and gene sciences space. So language models are now really good at speaking the language of human language. And there's already a bunch of companies working on this that are like, you know, starting to show some promising results that, are, that you know, friends of mine are working on that, that are now learning to speak the language of life itself, right? Like that means genetics and like proteomics and like all the different levels of interactions that genes and molecules have in our body and understanding biology at a very deep level. And I think that will become like an amazing tool at solving cancer diseases, autoimmune diseases, and so on. Like anything that's basically something that's wrong within our body and the interactions within the body that we can then solve much faster than with historical, you know, experimentation methods. So I think that's one thing that personally I'm really excited about. Same thing is true for like material sciences and other things like that, right? Like I think like there's this big need for like better and more sustainable power sources in the world, which ultimately boils down to, in a lot of aspects, like a material science problem and, and a physical simulation problem, both of which I think that AI models are getting really, really good at. So I think it's like kind of this acceleration force in a lot of these big fields that I think personally to me are like super exciting. And yeah, then I think the most exciting thing about this is that like I think probably if you listen to this like a year from now you'll be like oh this is so wrong like you know we this is like the most unexpected change happened and like no one saw that coming and i think that to me is the coolest part of it optimistically we've been saying to people that you know we hope that this podcast is something that people will want to listen to in a year from now but <laughs> yeah. increasingly to your point it may not be relevant anymore it's so. hard to predict although actually that might make it more fun you know, I think like I like to <laughs> I like to look at the stats, you know, of people like in the 80s, people were asked to predict like a lot of things like, you know, when will AI solve, you know, self-driving cars or language or this and that. And like they were so terribly wrong. <laughs> like, you know, famously, humans are horrible at predicting like the very long term. Like we always overestimate change in the very long term, but we usually underestimate change in the short term. So I think like we always think about like, you know, in the 1950s, they were like, oh, the future in 2000 will be so crazy with flying cars and all this crazy stuff. But like we still had all these diseases and all these other things that like actually changed drastically that people didn't think about like lifespan, life expectancy and healthcare and all these things. So I think like, yeah, that's exciting to me. Oh, that, that's a good spot to leave it. Pascal, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Matthew. It was really fun being on the show and great conversation. So I'm actually a little annoyed, not by anything Pascal had to say, to be clear, but because I actually did try automating my public records requests a few years ago, and it didn't go well. In fact, it went nothing like Pascal described. The technology was just not there. But if I was still filing those requests today, I know exactly what I would use. We've talked about a lot of AI use cases on this show, but I especially like the idea of AI as a sort of glue for the pieces of your digital life, as a tool that can take the apps and tabs and documents you need and stick them together in one place, all on its own. Something that doesn't try to change the way you work, but learns how you work and then works alongside you, even when a government fax machine is working against you. If you want to learn more about Bardeen, you can visit bardeen.ai. Working Smarter is brought to you by Dropbox. We make AI-powered tools that help knowledge workers get things done, no matter how or where they work. You can listen to more episodes on Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also find more interviews on our website, workingsmarter.ai. The show would not be possible without the talented team at Cosmic Standard, our producers, Samaya Adams and Asia Simpson, our technical director, Jacob Winnick, and our executive producer, Eliza Smith. 
At Dropbox, special thanks to Benji Baptiste for production assistance and our illustrators, Fanny Lohr and Justin Tran. Our theme song was created by Doug Stewart, and I'm your host, Matthew Braga. Thanks for listening. <laughs>